Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to St. John's on this beautiful day that God has blessed us with, especially when we're having our annual picnic. So I hope y'all can stay following the service as we cook hamburgers and hot dogs and hear David and I think the other David's playing. Is he playing today too? Oh, there he is. There he is. David and David are playing. And a lot of good food and a lot of good fun. And I think we have a new bounce house for the kids. So uh, so cool. So plan on joining us after worship today. And for those online, you still have time to come and celebrate our picnic together. But glad that you're worshiping with us online also. Uh, for those that are visiting, uh, everything will be on the screen. Uh, if you need a hand copy, the ushers may have already given you one. But if you want one, they will get one for you. Um, I have one announcement about next Sunday. I'm starting, you know, it's in the News Weekly. Uh, I'm starting a, a class called Lutheran 101. Um, we're going to take uh, the, the five weeks of October leading up to the Reformation, you know, to get us back to the basics, you know, have a refresher course for, for us longer time Lutherans and for newer Lutherans, uh, a, a, a course on helping us to know who we are and what we believe. So I hope. You'll plan on joining us next Sunday for that. Uh, any other announcements? Yes. Glad you're back. <laughs> yeah, I tell you, it felt really weird <laughs> to watch online last week. Uh, it, it really did. I mean, as much as Zoom that we did because of the tornado and pandemic, yeah, you know, it felt really weird not to be here. It's, you know, and I don't. It's not a bragging type thing, but it's the first Sunday I missed because of illness in over 21 years. So uh, I hope it's a, well, I don't think I'll be here 21 more years, <laughs> but I hope I don't miss another Sunday because it was really weird. But it was nice to be just sitting there and get to worship the whole time with Kathy. So that's kind of cool too. So thank you. If there are no other uh, announcements, please rise as we begin our worship with confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the one who forms us, Jesus who bears the cross, the spirit who makes our joy complete. We need the next screen or two, please. Let us bow before God in humility, confessing our sins. Steadfast and faithful God, you have revealed the ways of justice. Beloved in Christ, God's justice stretches beyond all understanding. God's compassion is beyond compare. In Jesus, God is always making a new way for us. In Christ, you are already and always forgiven. Amen. Amen. If, as you are able, remain standing for our opening hymn.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all here who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, you show perpetual loving kindness to us, your servants, because we cannot rely on our own abilities. Grant us your mercy, judgment, and train us to embody the generosity of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. You may be seated for the hearing of God's Word. Our first reading comes from Jonah 3.10 through 4.11. After Jonah's short sermon in 3.4, the Ninevites all repented, and God decided to spare the city. Jonah objected to this and became even more angry when God ordered a worm to destroy the plant that was providing shade. The book ends with a question that challenges any who are not ready to forgive. You, Jonah, are all worked up about a bush, but shouldn't I be concerned about 120,000 Ninevites? When God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity that he said he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. But this was very displeasing to Jonah, and he became angry. He prayed to the Lord and said, Oh Lord, is this not what I said while I was still in my own country? This is why I fled to Tarshish at the beginning. For I knew that you are a gracious God and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love, and ready to relent from punishing. And now, O oh Lord, please take my life from me, for is it, better, it is better to me, for me to die than to live. And the Lord said, Is it right for you to be angry? Then Jonah went out of the city and sat down east of the city and made a booth for himself there. He sat under it in the shade, waiting to see what would become of the city. The Lord God appointed a bush and made it come up over Jonah to give shade over his head to save him from his discomfort. So Jonah was very happy about the bush. But when dawn came up the next day, God appointed a worm that attacked the bush so that it withered. When the sun rose, God prepared a sultry east wind, and the sun beat down on the head of Jonah so that he was faint and asked that he might die. He said, it is better for me to die than to live. And he said, but God said to Jonah, is it right for you to be angry about the bush? And he said, yes, angry enough to die. Then the Lord said, you are concerned about the bush for which you did not labor and which you did not grow. It came into being in a night and perished in a night. And should I not be concerned about Nineveh, that great city, in which there are more than 120,000 persons who do not know their right hand from their left, and also many animals? Word of life, word of love. Thanks be to God. The psalm will be read responsibly by whole verse, and you read the full bold print. Psalm 145, 145, verses 1 through 8. I will exalt you, my God and King, and bless your name forever and ever. Every day will I bless you and praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. There is no end to your greatness. One generation shall praise your works to another and shall declare your power. I will speak of the glorious splendor of your majesty and all your marvelous works. They shall tell the might of your wondrous acts and I will recount your greatness. They shall publish the remember, remembrance of your great goodness. They shall sing joyfully of your righteousness. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. Our second reading comes from Philippians 1, 21 through 30.
Paul writes to the Philippians from prison, though he is uncertain about the outcome of his imprisonment, he is committed to the ministry of the gospel and calls on the Philippians to live lives that reflect and enhance the gospel mission. For me, living is Christ and dying is gain. If I am to live in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me, and I do not know which I prefer. I am hard pressed between the two. My, uh, my desire to depart and be with Christ, for that is far better, but to remain in the flesh is more necessary for you. Since I am convinced of this, I know that I will remain and continue with all of you for your progress and joy and faith, so that I may share abundantly in your boasting in Christ Jesus when I come to you again. Only live your life in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ, so that whether I come and see you or am absent and hear about you, I will know that you are standing firm in one spirit, striving side by side with one mind for the faith of the gospel, and are in no way intimidated by your opponents. For them, this is the evidence of their destruction, but of your salvation. And this is God's doing, for he has graciously granted you the privilege, not only of believing in Christ, but of suffering for him as well. Since you, are not ha since you are having the same struggle that you saw I had, and now hear that I still have. Word of life, word of love. Thanks be to God. Please rise for the gospel acclamation. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Open our hearts, O Lord, to give heed to what is said by your Son. Hallelujah. Jesus tells a parable about God's generosity challenging the common assumption that God rewards people according to what they have earned or deserved. The Holy Gospel today according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. When he went out about nine o'clock, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace and he said to them, You also go into the vineyard, and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. When he went out again about noon and about three o'clock, he did the same. And about five o'clock, he went out and found others still standing around. And he said to them, Why are you standing here I know all day? They said to him, Because no one has hired us. He said to them, You also go into the vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, Call the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and then going to the first. When those hired about five o'clock came, each of them received the usual daily wage. Now when the first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also received the usual daily wage. And when they received it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, these last worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us, who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to the last the same as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first and the first will be last. This is the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. You may be seated and invite the children forward, please. I want to thank uh, William for being our acolyte this morning and Sylvia for being our crucifer this morning. Thanks for uh, getting some really quick last minute instructions because we had to cancel our retreat a couple weeks ago because I was sick. You know, so thank you all for participating to make worship go well. Thank you for doing that. Hi guys. Hi. How are you all doing? Good. Tired? Yes, ma'am. We went to Alabama yesterday. I saw pictures that you went to Alabama yesterday. Yeah, I know. Picked up some chickens. You picked up some chickens? Yeah. Put them on your head? Yeah. <laughs> Why? <laughs> because we could. Because we could. And they thought it was, our hair was blue. They well, there, thought was, there was grass in our hair. And, there was grass. and then they kind of peck your head? No, they just like nibble at your head. They nibble at your head. One of them told well, it is Alabama. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. And I, I live there. 
I'm grounded. I know. I lived there, so. Well, but you, were you with family yeah. and friends? So that's always a good thing, isn't it? It's always good to be around family and friends because you get to do new and interesting things, right? Even if it's putting chickens on your head. Just like <laughs> doing it right now. Hey, um, can y'all help me with something real quick? Because I want y'all to be a part. You know, Sylvie and William helped get our service together. Can, can y'all help me with something? Okay, let's start. Let's let's start with you two. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> oh, very good. Did you see what she did? She did what I didn't. <laughs> I did not bow when I went up on the altar. Can y'all help me? I don't think we have enough water in our font. So. Can y'all help me put some water in the pot? You guys can sit down for a minute, okay? Can you put, put a little the water in there? Okay, good job, good job. You want to put some in? And y'all know what we do with this, right? What do we do? <laughs> no. Okay, thank you for helping out because that makes sure everybody has a chance to, to remember their baptisms, you know, as they go by the font, which is something that's good to do all the time. Okay, um, how about you two? Can y'all help me with this over here? Let's see. Let's take this one. And let's do what Jessica taught me. <laughs> and let's just stick those like right over here so we can be ready for communion a little bit later. Okay? Great. Thank you. Okay, that's right. Hold it. Yeah. You want to help? Yeah. Okay, come on. Okay, I'm, I'm getting. Can you take that? Are you sure? I may have done something else, but it didn't. Can you, can you step up there real quick? Okay. And we'll stick that one there. And that one there. And we're just about ready for communion. I'll get the communion assistant to help me a little bit later for the rest of it. You know, Jesus told a parable that, that some people would get left out sometimes. You know, and I want to make sure that you all know you're never left out. Everybody got the help, right? Yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> but that's that's what we're here. That's why we come to church is to find out how much God loves us and, and that He wants us to help Him get ready for this service every week. You know, and putting water in the font and getting ready for communion are two of the most important things that we do when we're here. To remember God loves us, washed away our sins, right? And then we have communion a little bit to be reminded again of how much God loves us. And that God wants us all to be a part of each other and to help each other because we can't do it all ourselves. We need people to help, okay? So let's do one quick thing. Uh, since we poured water in the font, let's go remember our baptisms, okay? Can we do that? Yep. Okay, we can do that. Yeah. Can you reach it again? Well, you know, sometimes, you know, when we do you know, like formal formal church, you know, what we'll do is get like a palm branch and we'll stick it in the water and <laughs> Okay, on Reformation Sunday, we're gonna do that. Okay? Do we wear a swimsuit? We're not gonna get that wet, I promise. Okay. I wanna get wet. All right, can y'all help me pray? Gracious God, thank you for always seeing us, for always inviting us, helping us to know you love us. Help us to see everybody else as God sees them. And let them come help us and we help them. 
Amen. Thanks, guys. Cheyenne. Good job. Thank you very much. Gracious God, may the words of my mouth and meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your hearing, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer, in whose name we pray. Amen. There are so many different wonderful aspects of all, all the readings today, so I'm going to try and touch on a little bit of all of them. But as I was getting ready to prepare this sermon, something just hit me in the back of my mind to start off with a question. And the question is, do you remember what some, were Jesus, some of Jesus' very first words after his baptism, at least according to the Gospels of Matthew and Mark? Do you remember what he said right after his baptism in the Temptations? The time is right, right? The time has come. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. The kingdom of God has come near. And I know I've probably asked this question in Sunday schools and maybe in worship at times. But what is God's kingdom? What is God's kingdom? What does God's kingdom look like? Right relationships. Right relationships. The right relationships that we do not have here because we are sinful and we don't know how to do that very well. Yeah, okay. So right relationships, when we're in a right relationship, we feel better about each other, right? <laughs> and we get along a little bit better. What else does the king, what does the kingdom, do you think, look like? Or does it, or does it be better than that? It's all around us. Oh, you just got ahead of me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we'll, we'll go there. Yeah, I mean, if it is a place of right relationships, and... and, and and for me, being a sinful person, as you all being sinful people too, we can't imagine a place of perfection, a place of total wonderful relationships, can we? We don't know what that looks like because we've never experienced. We do, we get glimpses of it, but not on a total basis. And why do we believe that's where we're going? Faith. Faith, absolutely. The faith that Jesus gives us because of the promises he made about giving us that kingdom, right? As he told that insurrectionist that uh, on the cross next to him, a terrorist, not a, not a thief and a bandit, as the Gospels will say. They kind of sugarcoated that. Today, you will be with me in paradise. Jesus promised that. So, as you said... Uh, my next question is, where is God's kingdom? And you said it's everywhere. And it's, because you know, that's what Jesus said, what he, right after his baptism, after the, uh, the temptation story, the kingdom of God has come near. Wherever Jesus is, that is where God's kingdom is, right? And where is Jesus? He's everywhere. He created everything, is a part of everything. So everywhere, anywhere and everywhere, we are standing like on holy ground. When you know, A lot of pastors will take their shoes off during a sermon because they are standing on holy ground. Because God is with us. So what was the purpose of Jesus' coming to our world? Forgiveness of sins. Absolutely. And he did that, right? Yeah. Who, who did he did that? Who did he do that for? Everybody. Every single person that ever came to him that he went to. And people that maybe he never even saw. <laughs> Including me and you. Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. He forgave us, gave the world once and for all from his cross you know and Jesus came not to change anything Jesus came to fulfill what the law and the prophets had always spoken about about God's love God's compassion we heard it in the Jonah story right we'll talk a little bit more about that in just a moment so we know that Jesus did that he did that with everybody 
And in today's parable, the workers in the vineyards, you know, he continues to show that non-partiality, grace that God has for, for those people, the people who were not called, who were not good enough to work in someone's vineyard. He kept coming to those people to bring them in to help them be a part of that. And again, we saw that through everything he did, especially from the cross, again, promising uh, paradise to the thief, to the terrorist next to him, promising forgiveness for the world that killed him. And even after his death and resurrection, Jesus kept coming to a guy named Saul, right? A guy who was a murderer of the church to continue to come to him who continued to care for him who continued to love him so that's Jesus but if you go back into the Old Testament who did God love and forgive people in Nineveh, people in Nineveh you know and a whole lot of other people right all the ites the Jebusites and the Barisites and all those people in the, in the promised land that God was taking them to and the Babylonians and the Assyrians and the Ninevites, right? Some of Israel's worst enemies at the time. That's why when Jonah got the call to go preach to them, what did he do? Here's Israel, here's Iraq, <laughs> Nineveh, and where did he go? <laughs> he went to Spain. He went in the total opposite direction because, as he said, I know that you are a compassionate God, loving and forgiving. But he also forgave Jonah, didn't he? Because of his misguided beliefs. And, you know, God forgave all of God's people. Do you know why they were, had problems with all the other nations? Do you, know, you know why they had problems with each other? Because they, God's people, who were taught to love and care for each other, did not do that, which caused all the problems and all the divisions and all the destruction in their lives and in the world because they, us all, they all could not follow God's way of love. Like They're, now. Like right now. Like right now. Like right now. We cannot agree to disagree. We cannot have a civil discussion, you know, and learn from each other. And that's how we learn from each other. You know, and again, that's another reason why Jesus came. You know, to help get that good relationship so that we can pass that on to each other. So we can get along with each other and learn from each other as we learn from the Christ. Yeah, you know, I mean, throughout Scripture, Old Testament, you know, even in the Old Testament, because some people still believe the Old Testament, you know, was just a precursor to Jesus and God changed his mind. And that's, no, it's always been God's love for the world. You know, and, you know, so throughout Scripture, who did God, who did Jesus not love and did not forgive? No one. He forgave them all. And why did he do that? Why does God do that? We're having Lutheran 101 starting next Sunday. <laughs> and I really would like everyone to come join us. We can't save ourselves. Because we cannot save ourselves. We cannot save ourselves. That's why, you know, we need a Savior, but God has forgiven us already and loved us already because we are God's children. God created every single person and God created them in God's image of love so that we can be in a right relationship with God and we can be in a right relationship with each other. You know, as Paul, the, the murderer of the church, you know, says somewhere, you know, nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Nothing or no one. This parable of the workers in the vineyard, just a, a, another incredible parable of Jesus' non-partial, uh, all-inclusive love. But it's interesting that that story starts at 6 a.m., right? And it ends at 6 p.m. So what I'd like us to think about, at 6 a.m., God created the world. And at 6 p.m., the Christ is coming again to redeem what we have broken. Since Jesus lived, died, was raised, and ascended, and we're going to say about 3 p.m. 
in that time frame because he died and was raised and ascended about 3 p.m. you know on that Easter on that Good Friday so from 3 p.m. till 6 p.m. we are to follow Jesus's example you know that we're living in the book of Acts right now did you know that you know the book of Acts where Jesus ascended into heaven and said he will come again you know, until he comes again, we are in that time frame. We are living in that absolute time frame when Jesus comes again back at 6 p.m., so to speak. So in the meantime, we are called to live the kingdom come lives that God gave to us to live that every day. We are to go to our labor pools, whatever those labor pools look like, to go to people who are cast out, who are marginalized by the world. People who are marginalized especially by the church, who needs Band-Aid. Thank you, Jason, for that wonderful sign idea. You know, because the church causes so much hurt and pain that we are called to help those marginalized people, help them to know that they too are loved, and that they are forgiven because they are children of God. What do you believe, arguably, is the greatest need people need? Peace. Peace, yeah. And how do we have peace? Do we have peace with more love? Yeah, people, don't people need to know that they are loved? Don't people need to know that they're a part of a, you know, a larger group? That's why the thing helping the kids this morning. To know that they are cared for. That someone has compassion for them. Yeah, I think that's what people need the most. What if all people knew, loved, knew they were loved and accepted by God? What if they knew they were loved and accepted by us? We would have less social, political, religious bullies and the many divisions and destructive times that they bring. We would have less classism, less racism. We would have less sex, drugs, and alcohol abuse, especially, oh my gosh, you know, the kid that died in New York City, right? Oh my gosh. We would have less human trafficking. We'd have less gun control. We would have less, well, you get the picture, right? You get the picture. We would have, our world would have less suffering and less pain if we lived in right relationships and learned those right relationships. And we would have a whole lot more peace and more hope. That is God's kingdom of unconditional love, of non-partial grace, hope, and peace. God is building in, among, through and with us here at St. John's. And that's why we do all we do with the giving of our time, talents, and treasures. We are reaching in so that we can reach out more and more to sing with what the psalmist sang today. Every day will I bless God and praise God's name forever and ever. I hope I don't get in trouble, but you bless God's name that your daughter-in-law has a cancer. If she's going to get one, that's the one to get, right? Praise God that we were vaccinated, you know, because it could have been worse. Praise God uh, in God's name forever and ever. And our psalmist gives us even more invaluable information on how to grow God's kingdom here when he said, one generation shall praise God's works to another and declare God's power. We are offering and teaching all generations about God's unconditional, all-inclusive, and forever love. That's why our kids are so comfortable with asking their questions about life and faith and to follow me blindly to do something. You know, uh, we, we have a lot we can learn from them because sometimes they're a little bit more, less inhibited to, to ask their questions or to answer a question that I might ask from standing up here. And is Ezra here? But you know, in about 10 minutes or so, he's gonna hear the communion liturgy 
and he's going to run back to this sanctuary because he knows the most important things about to happen. We can learn a lot from our amazing kids. As much as we are doing, as much as we want to be doing, and as much as we need to be doing to bring God's kingdom of love and peace into our world when we fall, when we fail to do all that we are called and commanded to do, we are to remember what Jonah and what the psalmist told us today, reminding us uh, also what Paul learned about God from Jesus, that in spite of us, God is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, ready to relent from punishment. And we all deserve punishment, right? God will never, ever give us what we deserve. Mercy withholds what we deserve. Grace gives us what we do not deserve. Mercy and grace is all about God's compassionate love for you. St. John calls that love grace upon grace, John 1, 16. God is very patient, loving, caring, compassionate, and forgiving God. What if our world knew our God of love? What if we followed what St. Paul said in our reading from Philippians today that it's better for him to stay here and to share that good news with all people rather than going to heaven? What could our kingdom come vineyard look like until 6 p.m.? May we strive to learn more about and live God's grace upon grace. Um, live that love for the world. Yes, we do this absolutely for our sakes. I want to have more peace. I want to have more hope. And I think you do too. But more so, we do this all for the glory of God who gives us the grace and the compassion and the love that only God can give. Amen. With Christians everywhere, let us profess our faith together with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. With grace upon grace, let us share the peace of Christ. The peace of the risen Christ be with you all. And also you. And share God's peace with one another. And, and be careful about that. <laughs>
to the table that all might be fed. Form us into the body of your beloved, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. You may be seated for the prayers of the people. Remembering the caring and generous works of God, we pray for the church, creation, and the needs of our neighbors. God, who is gracious and merciful, teach your church to invite and welcome all. Lead us to be grateful for the blessing of community. Challenge your church to choose equity and compassion over judgment. Merciful God, receive our prayer. prayer. God, who sends the wind and sun, you know every worm and bush by name. Help us remember that even the most humble parts of creation are precious to you. Show us how best to care for the earth and its creatures. Merciful God, receive our prayer. God, who is ready to relent from punishing, impart your compassionate wisdom to legislators, judges, members of the military, and law enforcement. Give them courage to serve their communities in times of uncertainty, stress, or exhaustion. Merciful God, receive our prayer. God, who saves, Direct your people who are tempted by evil ways. 
Protect your children from calamity and disaster. Strengthen all who are incarcerated. Encourage all who are in despair or pain of any kind, especially those on our prayer sheet and those we lift up to you with the voices or in our hearts. And we lift up Brittany Young, uh, Buzz's uh, daughter-in-law, who has been diagnosed with thyroid cancer. And we lift up Bobby Walcott, who has been diagnosed with breast cancer. Merciful God, God, who is slow to anger, may we boast about the goodness of Jesus with the confidence of Paul in prison. Inspire us to find abundance in whatever vocation we are called to in the world and service of our congregation. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Gracious God, we also lift up a friend of Susan Moss, um, Debbie Moore, who has stomach cancer. And her husband, Pat, has uh, dementia. Be with them. Lord, on this Resurrection Day, we lift up to you our former member, Everett Horton, who entered the church triumphant a couple months ago. Be with uh, Janie and their family and friends as they mourn their loss. We also lift up to you Sherry Wells, a friend of Susan Moss, uh, who entered your church triumphant, and um, her husband, Clayton. And we also lift up Tammy's niece's husband, uh, Shane N Nibby, who entered the, ch the church triumphant. Be with all these families and their friends as they mourn their loss. Help them to know the proof and the power of Christ's resurrection has brought them home. But be with them as they, as they grieve their loss. Uh, merciful God. Receive our oh, and one last thing. Uh, thank you for picnics that we're about to have. Uh, just thank you. God who abounds in steadfast love, we give thanks for the saints' call to the kingdom of heaven, especially united with them in spirit. Hold us firm as we labor in this life and look to the life to come. Merciful God, we see our prayer. Remember us according to your steadfast love as we offer these and the prayers of our heart, trusting in your compassion made known through Jesus Christ. rise as you're able. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift them to the Lord. It, let us give thanks to the Lord our God. our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you almighty and merciful God for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life and so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. He was betrayed our Lord Jesus took bread gave thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take and eat this is my body given for you do this for the remembrance of me 
again after supper he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin do this for the remembrance of me as the one people of God may we proclaim and say together not just say the words of our Lord's prayer but also learn to live those words our Father, Father who art in heaven, heaven. to this table. Come, eat, and live. Come to a table where all are welcome. And all all means all. All. come, all is prepared. For those that might be new, just come down the center aisle and form around uh, the, the, the altar area. We'll commune by intention after receiving the bread, or if you like a wafer instead, let us know. Uh, the gold chalice has wine, the clay chalice has grape juice. After receiving communion, you return to your seats. Again, these are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. And for those that are worshiping online, this is the body and blood of Christ, God's love, given and shed for you.
Please rise as you are able. The body and blood of our risen Lord and Savior Jesus Christ keeps us in God's grace this day and always. Amen. Amen. on your word, Christ Jesus, the joy and delight of our hearts. Strengthened by this food, send us to gather the world to your banquet, where none are left out and all are satisfied. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The God of glory, Jesus Christ, name above all names and the spirit who lives in you, bless you now and forever to live God's love for all. Amen. Amen.